Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. How's it going, guys? Um, bit of an earlier preview today. I've probably scheduled it about the normal sort of time, but as you can see, recording this on Wednesday, Shorty's off to Sydney. So it should be a bit of fun going after the Cats game. Um, yeah, he's got the haircut. He's got the new clothes going on. Um, should be a pretty solid weekend. So, yeah, heading off Thursday morning. Um, so, yeah, therefore, thought I'm going to have to get this content rolling a little bit sooner. So, obviously, I don't really have any idea on the teams, and I don't have your wonderful questions to go off from the live session. I'll still be going live tonight, as you'll know, because it will have already been by the time this is posted. But... I did jot down a few names and discussion points. I'll also go down or go through um, premiums or solid options below 550k for your defence, midfield and forward. I feel like that's kind of a bit pressing. People want to know, shit, can I find a bit of a bargain here or there or a bit of a, a discount option that can still give me good points. So we'll talk about that. Uh, and yeah, just make it up on the go really. So... Um, but yeah, looking forward to Sydney. Shorty will be there by the time you're watching this. Um, had the haircut, like I mentioned. I'll tell you what, it cracks me up like haircut chats. Do you ever go in and get like barbershop or something? I've got this hairdresser I normally go to. She's a family friend. So we just chat for ages. Like we've been going, like getting her haircut, um, getting my haircut there for ages. So it's like no real small talk. Um, but the barbershop, which. I love the cut. They do a bit more of like a modern sort of cut, you know what I mean? I love the old family friend. She's great. But if I want the modern cut, you got to go to the old barber shop. So therefore, you get a, a little random bloke. It's just funny stuff. Like, it's funny stuff, the things they ask you about. And just the... It's a weird feeling like you'll just get all sorts of stuff. Like, they love calling you bro and dude. It's like, how you going, man? And then they just hit you with the... Like, they're shaving your head or something. Like, hey, mate, are you going to George's next week? I'm like, oh, fuck. He's... He's not talking to me now. He's just talking to his mate who's three stalls the other way. Yeah, yeah, mate. Go, along. Yeah, yeah. go, to, the, go to the pub afterwards. Yeah, mate. Anyway, what did you say you're doing on the weekend? It's like, fuck. It's chaos in here, man. It's chaos. Um, but yeah, it's just like funny stuff. He was a good bloke too. Like, good fella. We got to talk about it. I'll tell you what, if you don't find a good topic of conversation in the first five or so minutes you're in trouble. I mean, I don't know. Let me know. Do some people just sit there getting their hair cut? You know, you're just happy to sit, chill. Occasionally, there's a few words exchanged. <laughs> me, I, I'm also like to have that chit-chat going. Otherwise, it feels a bit weird and awkward for me. So once you get past the, what are you up to? What's on for the weekend? What do you do with yourself? How long have you been cutting hair for, man? Once you get through those, if you haven't scrambled onto something half decent who do you follow in the footy mate you are in trouble so <laughs> good fun though good fun as will the sydney trip so hopefully i'll come back with a couple of stories for you um and i can share you um oops share those with you so terrible news about maddie randell as well i i knew he's in a pretty bad way but i i didn't expect that would happen today so it was yeah it was very sad news. Um, kind of rattled me when I jumped on the website. But in terms of some topics I wanted to talk about, and this will just be a bit hodgepodge. In terms of the um, VC and C, I'm probably looking at Dunkley into Bobs and Pally. Um, but we've got all our boys back. You know, the boys are done. So I'm happy to just go nuts. But um, Oliver's super concerning. All of a sudden, he was in my plans. If you're holding on to him, I'm almost saying get rid of him now. I'm saying get rid of him now. It's, it's very frustrating. We really did want him to come back and be part of our plans, but I just can't get a read on it. it makes me a bit concerned. There's so much uncertainty. Um, and I need a, my boys need to bounce back too. I had a shocking week last week, so looking to really respond. Um, and I should make two trades. So Bailey Humphrey, I'm thinking we'll go to Sam Walsh. And then I'll probably have Van Royen go to... Oh, I need to bring in a defender somehow. Luke Ryan, I think. I mean, Luke Ryan and Jordan Ridley, I mean, to be fair, I sort of spoke about them as guys that I'm not sure if they've got that top-end scoring in them. And, and their last five to six weeks had kind of shown that. And they both stuck it at me. <laughs> they really did. So I think I'll bring Luke Ryan in. Ridley's clearly in some good form. I've been a bit slow to him. Um, but yeah, clearly he's producing some great stuff. 
Guys like Keys and Darcy Cameron, I think they're good options if you do need a bit of a cheaper option in your forward line. Um, dual position can come into it. I think it's important. So I'll talk about those guys in um, a little bit later in the video. Also, just keep your eye on Took Miller and Callum Mills as well. I think we need cheaper options soon. And those two guys, Miller's not quite back, but Mills, is, he might be under 400K, which is ridiculous to think. And... If you have a bit of dual position already floating in your mid and forward, like Mills could easily be your M8 and you could produce Stephen Cornelio or Ben Keys to be your M9 or F7, whatever way you want to cut it. So I really think a Mills at that price is almost too hard to refuse. But um, Kieran Briggs, you know, a lot of talk about, man, do we just stick with him as opposed to Marshall? I still think Marshall as you go. I really do. Um, I feel as if, He's just more reliable. I know Briggs is running hot, but you've still got Proust. You've still got Flynn. I just think we know Marshall is going to be the main ruck at St. Kilda for the rest of the year. Briggs is probably going to average similar to him, but there has to be some form of doubt. You know, I don't study the Giants team super closely, but there has to be just a smidgen of doubt. You know, I know he's playing amazing, so there's no doubt at the moment. But just if he drops off a bit or he gets tired because he's not used to shouldering that sort of a ruck load, then they give him a chop out. You know, I'd, I'd hate for us to back Briggs in and then round 19, they're like, yeah, look, he's, you know, shoulder the load for 10 weeks. We're just going to help him out with Matty Flynn. He starts scoring 70s. So it's just something to think about. Um, Fife is also a pretty, well, not reliable, but he's back in some solid form, looks to be getting better and better every week. So that's something to think about. Um, but yeah, I will dive into... Um, see, my real issue, right, is Malikin and Chesser. Not only do I need to have one of those guys on the field, but I need them both to be named. Far out. And Elliot Yo going down, that would have hurt a few people, but the risk was always written on the wall there with that one. Hopefully you are. It's not always is my advice good, but I did say, you know, be careful. There are more durable types. But here I am talking about Shannon Hearn the other day, so... Maybe I've lost the plot. I'm just going to stop this recording and it would flip the page over to each position here where I've just got four, five, six names to think about if you're looking for a slightly cheaper alternative um, to fill out the rest of your side. And we are at that stage of the year where you should be looking to complete your team. I'll have one more upgrade to do, um, I think, will I? Yes, I think I will. It'll just be Briggs to Butters, um, and that should see me out. Yes, there's a little bit of dual position action to be done there, but um, Sicily comes back. So, yeah, team coming along okay. Um, but, yeah, anyway, in terms of some guys that can provide a little bit of value because at this stage we've been hit pretty hard at times and dollars are tough to come by. Trades we've got to be savvy with. So finding a little bit of a discount option can be handy. So I have had a few questions about who can I get in this position under 550K. So I've just come through with a few names. Down back, Doherty and Houston are your clear options, I think, under 550K. How long they stay under 550, not sure. But I would put them just ahead of Ridley and Ryan. So I can only really afford Ryan. I know I've got 400K in the bank, but I've got other things to do with Zach Butters. So I do have to do that. Um, I would go sort of Doherty in Houston, smidgen above Ridley and Ryan, but all four are good options at a reasonable price. If you're really struggling for cash, Shannon Hearn, when he comes back, he's going to drop below 450. And I know it's a little bit hectic, pretty left field, but sometimes we've got to think left field. He scored really well when he's out there. Clearly there's doubt over the body given he's 35 coming off a hammy, but just something to think about, just giving you options. In the midfield, Tuke Miller will fall into a nice price. Got to consider him. Callum Mills we touched on. I think the clear one for the price point is Sam Walsh. I just think he's at a really nice price. But Parrish, Sarong, all around that sort of range. Good prices. Great players for that price point. And Tom Green as well. Jaden Short. This could almost be a defensive option because I think he's almost definitely going to get dual position when the time comes. So... You know, if you're thinking, gee, I don't really like those other options, shorty, down back, maybe you go Jaden Short, flick it back when um, when he gets that dual position. In the forward line, 
I've been talking Cornelio up a fair bit all year. I know he hasn't quite been maybe what we had hoped, but he's still produced a solid year, average 99. Hasn't quite had those absolute big games, but he rarely puts in a stinker. He's at a nice price. Dare I say Errol Goulden. Just a bloke who keeps haunting me. He's still just under 550, so I'll chuck him in there. Darcy Cameron, Ben Keys, 550, desperately struggling, but... Um, so they're all guys that I think can contribute really nicely to your team. So um, that might be a wrap for me. It is a bit of a random sort of video, shorty just talking all sorts of random shit. So hopefully that does attend to a few of your questions that you got out there. That's what's beautiful about the lives, mate. I just get the exact idea of what the community out there is thinking so we can just smash out a video dedicated to your actual questions and comments. Didn't quite have that luxury this time, but hopefully you've taken something away from it. Um, I'll be sure to talk to you guys Sunday night, maybe Monday, depending when I get back, depending what sort of state of condition I am in. But I look forward to it anyway. Talk to you soon. Cheers.